this is the population forecast for 2045, the first component of the planning data forecast. I'm going to retain the basic methodology that was used for the previous planning data forecast for 2040, but with a little bit of procedural modification. Uh, one of the things we're going to continue to do, however, is to aggregate the data at the level of the sub-areas instead of looking at each community subdivision individually. That helps kind of just smooth out some of the maybe higher counts that one community might indicate and maybe some artificially low counts from other communities so we can just sort of average out those extremes into a smoother single variable at the sub-area level. So I'll talk a little bit about the methodology that we're going to be using for this forecast, um, starting with the mathematical model that we're going to use, and I'll try to translate it into a little bit of layman's terms and not get too technical in the process. Uh, in the past, the forecasting methods have relied on some regression lines or curves, and they have some pluses and some minuses in using them for forecasting for population. Um, if you just take a quick look at these graphs uh, with the x-axis along the horizontal axis, this is usually where you plot time. So this would be in either yearly in intervals or in the case of uh, decennial census, these would be 10-year increments. And then along the y-axis, the vertical axis is where you'll plot either your population count or your population estimate. And then if you have a set of data coordinates from the past, you can plot those on the graph, and then Excel can calculate an approximate equation for either a straight line or a curved line that we can then go and extend out into the future to calculate the potential forecast numbers for the years of interest that we're looking at. So in the past, the two procedures that have been used primarily have been uh, just a straight line, the linear function, which Excel calls the forecast function, or the exponential function, which is nonlinear. You can see on the right hand under the previous used models on the slide that those are curved, but they have some drawbacks for using them as population forecast tools. So starting with the linear function, as you can see on the top graph on the top left, the line is just increasing indefinitely, and it's n there are really no limits on the increase to that line, which isn't really realistic. We know that sooner or later, populations are going to start to taper off, even if they are in a growth mode. And similarly, on the graph below that on the left, with the decreasing straight line, eventually that line is going to hit zero population. And barring some horrible catastrophic event, we know that's not really realistic for a population estimate either. And looking next, then, to the exponential curves, these are often most helpful for a community that's experiencing really rapid growth or really rapid decreases. And sometimes that may be the case if a new community is just getting established or a, a new business is opening up in a community that is employing a lot of people. There might be a sudden influx of population. Or similarly, if there is some, as Summit County has experienced, unfortunately, in the past when there's a sudden decline in industry and there may be a rapid flight from the area, then we're going to see more exponential increase or decrease. But again, those tend to level off eventually. So that's why I've decided to approach this using a new model on the far right using a logarithmic curve, which you can see has a little bit more gradual change than the other two, the linear and the exponential. And although Excel doesn't have an explicit function for calculating this kind of curve, it's easy enough to set up in a spreadsheet in order to calculate that. So um, using the more gradual change, I think, is going to show some more realistic numbers in our forecasting. Then moving on to the data selection that we're going to use, um, we tried running the logarithmic regression curves using two sets of data, and we found that we got better results for Portage County using one set of data and better and different results using a different set of data for Summit and Wayne counties. So for doing the population forecast for Portage County, we're running the curve, uh, the estimation, using actual census data counts for the years 1960 to 2010. So that gives us 10, or I'm sorry, that gives us six years over those 10-year intervals. And it seemed better to reflect the pattern of continued growth that we expect, particularly in the western half of Portage County. Uh, for Summit and Wayne counties, are anticipating maybe not quite such robust growth as in Portage County, 
and we found that we got better results if we actually used American Community Survey five-year estimates instead of actual census counts. So again, sort of to keep it somewhat comparable to the procedure using in Portage County, I used, uh, again, six different data counts from the years 2011 through 2016. And there was just one exception with that is when we used the American Community Survey counts for the city of Green, it seemed not to give quite as robust a result as we anticipated since that area seems still to be undergoing some pretty considerably fast growth. So for that one, we made the exception and reverted back to the census count and then just sort of meshed those together with the other counts for the communities in Summit County. So looking at the overall forecast for the entire AMATS region, uh, you'll see that the actual census count in 2010 was around 723,000 people. Uh, projecting the count into 2045 is roughly 17,000 people more for about a 2.4% increase overall. And then if we break that down and look at the counts by county, and you'll see on these slides, I just want to point out that when you look at the graph for each county, just note that they're not explicitly comparable. Uh, you'll see that the scales are a little bit different, both the X and the Y axes. And for that reason, I just want you to be careful that if you're comparing the curves, there are some subtle things to remember. Um, bearing in mind that for Portage County, you'll see on the X axis, on the horizontal axis, those are 10 year increments because we're using the actual census data. So those are actual census counts on that curve. Whereas for Wayne and Summit County, uh, we're using the American Community Survey data, and those are one-year intervals. And then also uh, the Summit County graph adjusts for that one exception that we're making for green. So just bearing in mind. But you'll see that um, the trend for all three of those uh, sub-areas, breaking it down by county, is positive, um, with a little bit more robust growth anticipated in Portage County. Then if we break down Summit and Portage counties by their sub-areas, we'll start first with Portage County. And here again, you can see some pretty strong anticipated growth in each of those four quadrants. Um, looking on the, the right hand on the eastern side of the county, those percentages are fairly high, but just bearing in mind that you'll get a higher percentage since those areas of the county tend to have lower population in general. So any change is going to result in what seems to be a higher percentage, but that's more of a relative measure than an absolute measure. But again, the trend is generally uh, quite strong and quite positive. And then looking at the sub-areas in Summit County, uh, we'll see kind of anticipated uh, slower growth in the older industrial cities, Akron, Barberton, Cuyahoga Falls, but um, fairly moderate decrease, not very strong precipitous decrease. And in fact, if you look at the three graphs on the left-hand side of the slide for each one of those communities, you'll see that the American Community Survey actually shows a little uptick in population for Akron and Cuyahoga Falls. So um, that's one of the things, too, with this particular method, is it's really just going to be able to predict an overall trend. It certainly is not going to be an exact accurate number, since uh, these methods are fairly rudimentary. They don't take into account strict uh, variables like um, immigration or emigration or birth and death rates. So I have to issue the disclaimer that I'm not a demographer and I'm not a statistician. So this is a very rough estimate, but it does give, I think, a pretty reasonable estimate and sense of the general trend that these communities are taking for the next 25 to 30 years. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me either by phone or by email. Thank you very much for your attention. <music>